All right, look, I don't like Atlas. I think the One Punch Man memes were dead on arrival and are now mostly used by I don't like his dumb bacon. I don't like that he doesn't have a neck. I don't like his first ability. It's not good for mobility, and I dislike still having to carry a stat stick in 2019 Warframe. I don't like the rumblers because the AI sucks. I don't like the rubble because it's pretty easy to lose track of your situational awareness, and also, it's just dumb. I don't like his third ability because it causes enemies to become immune to status procs, and I don't like his dumb little wall because it's just a small, dumb wall. I don't like him, but that doesn't mean he's a bad frame. He can be really quite tanky, he has some mechanics that can be used for a respectable amount of damage, parts of his kit can contribute significantly to an objective-focused playstyle, and he does have some really solid loot drop mechanics. Now, Atlas is not for me, but, you know, he might be for you, and that's a part of why we're looking at Atlas today. everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Joey Zero's not-so-weekly Warframe show. I'm, I'm, I had some personal stuff and one of the segments, I mean, it, it took some time. Anyway, anyway, this week's episode is about Atlas, which admittedly I don't have like a ton of playtime on him. I think he does some cool stuff, but every build I've tried and every time I try to get into him, he's just not my favorite, but he can still do some cool things. I feel like Zandi actually expressed my thoughts and feelings about him really well during his tech of the week which is coming up later in this episode. But we've still got some fun stuff lined up for this episode, so I hope you enjoy it. As for what happened this week in Warframe, we we didn't get a lot, really. We did get the changes to the arbitrations with a bunch of new rewards. Really excited about those, and I haven't had a chance to really dive in on earning those rewards yet, but honestly, now that I'm set back up, I can't wait to dig in. And I still need that ephemera, so th that's, that's, I'm gonna be doing that. If you're interested in the changes to the arbitration mechanics about, like, being able to revive players, I did make a video about that. You can check that up at the top there's a little button you can click that if you want but that's it really that's all we got which honestly I'm pretty thankful for because I haven't had the time that I would like to uh, uh, devote to the game this week anyway that's it I'm gonna go ahead and kick it over to Zeno now I'll see you guys later now it's time for an unpopular opinion as one of the least liked warframes in the entire game Atlas should be improved where his punch ability is influenced by the melee weapon he is currently wielding. This means that if he uses the Xanastar and does a charge attack, he is hurled across the map and then starts spinning around on the spot for a good 45 seconds while just having a fun time. Likewise, if he has no melee weapon equipped, he shouldn't be able to actually throw a punch. You just watched Xenogillion giving an unpopular opinion. Brought to you by Zenric Brand Energy Soda. Get energized. Hello fellow Tano, Michel here, coming at you live from Lua. For years, the only place to find is legendary wool. Until today, that is. That's right folks, its creator has made a brand new wool called... Wool 2. First of all, congratulations, sir. I like credits. What inspired you to build a second wall right next to the original? Credits. Oh yeah, we're talking Atlas today. So, Atlas, the rock frame, the one punch frame, or the most uncommon warframe that you will see people use. Really, for some reason people don't play Atlas a lot and that's a shame, because he's quite a good Warframe. So let's dive into his ability set, starting off with his first, Landslide, or as I like to call it, his Punch. His Punch deals 350 impact damage, which can be increased with strength mods, however the Punch actually classifies as a melee attack. This means that it counts on the melee counter and more importantly, makes use of the mods that you have on your melee weapon. As you can see here, I'm using my Helioker because I have a good impact griffin, but you can use any weapon you like. So we have the raw damage mods, the damage types, and we also have a little bit of a status boost as well. Watch out though that these stats are not for Sponge, but for the Helioker. 
His punch has a base impact of 350, a status and crit chance of 5% and a crit multiplier of 2.0. With this particular build it will probably look something like this and these are the only stats that you can actually change. So our melee trinity or this shattering impact mod which are both really amazing they sadly don't apply on Atlas Punch. Moving on we have his second ability which makes a tiny wall that you can hide behind or throw at enemies. Then we have his third ability that petrifies enemies and turns them into stone statues and his fourth summons rumblers which are these rock buddies that will assist you in the fight. Now what makes Atlas special is the synergy between his abilities. Let's say that I cast my petrify on enemies and then hit them with my punch. Boom! They will receive more damage but also crumble into rubble. Now rubble will give Atlas back some health and increase his armor when he is at full health. If you put a Rage or Hunter Adrenaline mod on him, he will receive energy from health damage and then you can replenish that health with your punches. Atlas also has this great mod called Path of Statues, which can petrify enemies after you use your punch, which is just really super useful. Then you can also use your wall for some cover or to draw enemy fire when you need it and I personally use my rumblers if I need to get out of enemy fire or use them to replenish my health as when they die they will also turn into rubble. Overall you just have to be a little bit hands on with Atlas but he can stand on his own rather well and I would definitely advise you to try him out. Hold on, what's that? Listen up, I'm gonna charge him and you gotta run, okay? Hey you! So Warframe recently won a webby for their like audio and soundtrack work and everything. Which reminded me of one thing that I actually do really, really like about Atlas, which is his sound. This Warframe has my favorite audio out of any Warframe. It's really interesting to listen to. It communicates the theme of the frame very clearly, I feel. It sounds really kinetic in that, you know, when you, you when you punch somebody, you can really kind of feel that. You know, it's got all these interesting sounds of like rocks rumbling together and everything. And it's one of those things where if you focus on the audio, if you like, you know, turn your volume up and you really kind of dig in, it's really, it really adds to the immersion, I feel like. And I love that. I that's what That is why I love the audio for Atlas more than like any other frame. Anyway, so DE has kind of given us a little bit of a peek behind the curtain from time to time about how they make some of the sounds for Warframe, some of the sounds for weapons, some of the sounds for, you know, the abilities and everything. And I thought it would be fun, I thought it would be cool to go ahead and take what we know, take the things that they have shown us, and try and kind of recreate like new Atlas sounds for the Atlas Deluxe skin. It's just something that I thought would be a lot of fun. Now, full disclaimer, I don't know much about sound design for games or in general, really. This is just a fun thing, just a fun little fan thing. Just kind of for reference, here are the originals. So first thing to know is that on a dev stream a very long time ago, DE they actually showed us the team field recording a bunch of rocks rolling around and stuff. This is the best one. <laughs> and so yeah, that's what I did. Okay, so I need noises of like rocks crumbling around and stuff. So we're just gonna record that really quick. I'm um, recording on a Rode NTG2 and uh, Zoom H6 handy recorder, haha. -ha. And of course we've got like a dead cat and stuff. So I'm just gonna like go throw some rocks around and stuff and record it with this and then we're gonna see how it turns out. Yeah, cool. And then the next thing that I wanted to do was kind of to put my own spin on it to go with the whole crystal vibe. Uh, I wanted to incorporate some of the audio design that we saw for Gera into some of these new sounds. Now, this was a dev stream in 2017, I think, but they, you know, kind of showed a little bit of what went into making the audio for Gera. So I went ahead and got some crystal wear and sat down and actually live streamed the process of capturing the audio of some crystal wear. You joined into me recording some Foley, all right? 
You join in to me. Dank beats with water. There you go. <laughs> it sounds moist. Well, I mean, I don't know what you expected. So I did that and I feel like that worked out pretty well. So here's what I've got. And first thing I did was record some background ambience just from the capture a tile, just so, you know, we could be consistent with it. Now, the next thing is those like deep percussive kind of hits, which are basically a couple of kick sounds mixed together. I've got like a gabber-ish kick mixed with some of Octavia's kicks and a couple other sound effects from the game that are all kind of mixed together. And then I've got kind of the rocky hits, which are basically just the, the rock samples all kind of stacked on top of one another. And, you know, I kind of played with the pitch a little bit, played with the EQ. It sounds really crunchy, but when it all plays together, you'll kind of get a little bit better of an idea of, I guess, how it sits in the mix. And then I've also got the crystal noises, which are basically just a bunch of different crystal noises stacked kind of on top of one another uh, with a little bit of like chorus and reverb and stuff. And then finally, for all of these, I chose to leave that kind of snarly Atlas sound in there because it's just not Atlas without those. If I had to guess about how they made these, I'd say that they are synthetic. Probably, I'd wager that they were made in Massive, but that's just a guess. For all I know, it could literally be somebody on the audio team just snarling in front of a mic, but you know, it's, it's just a guess. Literally just a guess. But I felt like it would just not be Atlas without that snarl in there in particular. So, if we put them all together, uh, here's what we get. Welcome to my tech of the week. I'm Zandy, and this is an Atlas build that presses for a lot. Behold! When you summon your rumblers, you also get a radial petrify that scales with range, and both the rumblers and petrified enemies drop rubble on death, so you can very quickly stock up on rubble for lots of healing and bonus armor. The tricky bit about petrifying enemies is that they're immune to status for the duration, so ideally you'd want corrosive projection against armor. I specifically brought this Vakor Heck, which is built with large damage bonuses against both ferrite and alloy armor, to kill armored enemies without the help of status effects, but this will stop going so well past level 100 or so without some corrosive projections. Now, there are those of you who are fans of Atlas's punches that may be wondering what my build accomplishes. Sure, Atlas's punches don't do much of anything to counter armor, but if enemies will be immune to status anyway because they're petrified, you might reasonably just build for strength and at least have powerful damage scaling to use against those petrified targets. Some of you may even point out that Atlas's petrify effects pause status duration, so even if I didn't want to overwhelm the armor with punching damage, I could load enemies up with slash procs and stuff before petrifying them and end up getting damage out of the petrify. I didn't do either of those things, and the only advantage I got out of the deal is that I can press 4 really fast when there are no enemies around, and build up a lot of rubble pretty efficiently, avoiding a minor weakness of most other Atlas builds. I usually get to go into combat with the full 1500 armor. And my explanation for all of that is... Yeah, I don't know exactly. I'll tell you my perspective for what it's worth. I'm like the anti-main type of player, so I play Warframe with every part of the game in mind basically all the time, that's just how I prefer to play. So when I make a build for a frame, as a player that plays every other frame, I don't want to do something that another frame does better. 
So with Atlas, for example, there are other frames that kill with direct damage from their abilities much more efficiently, like Mesa, or for something more similar you could use Korra's Whip Claw specifically. Both of those have status and more avenues to get tons of damage output. There are also frames that do status duration pausing better, such as Limbo and Frost. They hit a massive area with their pausing abilities, while also boasting powerful area denial that Atlas almost completely lacks. So the reason that I like my Rumblers build is that pressing 4 with it has a lot of value all at once in the right situation. The ability to accumulate resources out of combat by repeatedly blowing up Rumblers, as well as the snap crowd control and potential for spot status duration pausing on heavier targets like Noxes while getting all that other stuff is all wrapped up into one skill. And it just looks awesome and smashy and fun to me too. I've never enjoyed a build quite as much as this that comes down to just pressing 4 to win. Eh, well, it doesn't actually kill the enemies, so I guess it's a press 4 to make winning a formality build? Anyway, the long and the short of it is that I find this more fun, and it fills its own weird little niche. I've been Zandy, and you've been Dandy, and I hope you're now very rocky as you head into combat armed with this value-packed 4th ability. Thanks for tuning in to my Tech of the Week. Enjoy the rest of our show. All right, so I've been doing requests for pretty much all of the weapon reviews this season, and today I'm doing one for me. I'd like to introduce you to my favorite bow in the game, the Paris. This weapon is an absolute classic. It's easy to obtain early game, and it can be built into an incredibly powerful workhorse weapon. If you've been watching for a while, you'll probably know that I'm not a huge fan of bows in general, but whenever I get a bow-only sortie, this is usually my first choice. And before anybody brings up the lens, it, we, we did that one already. Go watch that. You know the drill. There's a, the Mark I Paris, the stock Paris, and then the Paris Prime, and we're going to be focusing on the Paris Prime because it's just statistically the strongest. So this is a bow that does primarily puncture damage. It's got a pretty high crit chance at 45%. It's got some respect status chance, but otherwise it doesn't really have much going on for it mechanics-wise. Drawing comparisons to some of the more meta-favored weapons, it's got slightly less crit chance than the Dread and a much higher base damage and Riven disposition, where the Dread has a much higher slash disposition. But the big reason why you'd want to draw comparisons to the Dread is that both of these weapons are really good at one thing, and that is critical slash procs. The Dread, thanks to its higher slash disposition, can do this innately, while the Paris relies on Hunter munitions. But the difference in damage disposition position allows for some interesting build craft options between the two. The Paris in particular, due to its high puncture damage, is great at getting higher outright damage numbers against those armor targets due to its damage modifiers. And as we've covered before, damage type modifiers can stack with critical damage and headshot multipliers in really powerful ways. Now, as with most slash-based weaponry, adding viral damage for the occasional viral procs can go a really long way in making those slash procs hit harder. But if you add in viral damage, what you end up with is a weapon that doesn't lose much when attacking enemies that are heavily armored, partially armor stripped, or fully armor stripped. It gets high damage modifiers against all of them, which is a part of what makes this weapon so dang reliable. As for the Rivens, again, this weapon has a reasonably high Riven disposition. It's not amazing, but it can take Rivens pretty well. We're talking about fire rate, crit chance, crit damage, base damage, and even some tertiary stats like reload speed and flight speed all work really well on this weapon. Remember, bows gain double fire rate from fire rate mods, and reload speed increases the speed at which you knock the next arrow. With the way that this weapon is statted, and with as high as the Riven disposition is, you can build to try and aim to get those single shot kills, or you can build for sustained damage against heavier targets, and either one would be a good choice here because this is almost exclusively a single target weapon. So that's it for the Paris. I've already got the next couple of weapons picked out, and we're coming up to the end of the season here, so if you have other suggestions for where we should pick back up in Season 3, make sure to join our Discord. That's good, probably going to be the best place to put suggestions for what we do next. Okay. All right, so that's just about it for this one. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks so much for your support. As you guys know, I have a lot of fun putting these together. I'm glad you guys have as much fun watching them. As usual, make sure you check out the other creators that were involved in the making of this episode. You'll find links to the channels and social media of Michelle Postma, Zandy Pants, and Xenogellion all down in the description below. And, you know, two more episodes left of season two. Pretty excited. Hope you guys can make it for the live watch through. That'll be really, really rad. But that's it. I'll see you next time. Once again, my name's Joey Zero. Okay, bye.